it goes beyond the nine to five. You know, whether that nine to five be in our support center, in our stores, distribution centers, it's about thinking about um, the whole person mm -hmm. when we design our programs, our policies. And that also means individuals, families. So that goes beyond um, the person's work experience or workplace experience. It goes into, you know, what does it mean to support them in their entire lives? Hi everyone, welcome back to the HR Leaders Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Holly May, who's the Executive Vice President and Global Chief HR Officer of Walgreens Boots Alliance. During the episode, Holly shares how Walgreens Boots Alliance is creating an unapologetically human approach to leadership and how she's using radical vulnerability to support mental health in the workplace. As always, before we jump into the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell and follow on your favorite podcast platform. With that being said, let's jump in. Holly, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. As I said, I'm just moving into the house. So trying to get settled, realizing I have no DIY skills whatsoever. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm attempting. There's a lot of YouTubing going on at the moment, trying to pretend I know what I'm doing. We have no idea. Um, Does anyone else in your house uh, have that skill set? <laughs> no, I feel like my wife's better than me, to be honest, at DIY at this point as well. <laughs> I only just realized yesterday that I have a garden and I was like, oh, ah. so because I've been in an apartment for the last 15 years and I was like, oh, I actually have to do stuff <laughs> and learn how to <laughs> cut grass and look after well, the plants. It's it's yeah. all about having the outdoor space. Fresh air is key. Yeah. And that, that was the idea. I think, um, you know, you know, how, you, you know how, how it is. I think you, you mentioned you got a five-year-old with Robin, who's four now. I wanted her to have a bit of space, you know, to run around, have fun um, as well. So it's good. But how, how are you? How's the family? Always an adventure. I'm just getting <laughs> out of the house in the morning. It's always an adventure. Yeah. Oh, we, we have a holiday week this weekend. So my my son, my five year old is off school. So um, it's it's a lot of activities, keeping him busy um, and, you know, fighting structure to the day. So my my husband's been quite the champ. Nice. Uh, helping out a bit more this week while I'm in the office. What are some of the um, things that your kids into like sports and stuff like that? Um, Oh gosh, it's trains, trains, and trains. More trains. All trains all the time. All sorts of trains. Um, he's just gotten into electric trains. Wow. Still, you know, uh, enjoys Thomas the Train. That's that's <laughs> yeah, the original. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the original. <laughs> OG, but uh, uh, no, he's he's into these N scale electric trains now. Wow. So um, unfortunately, it's a bit of an expensive hobby. I'm coming to find. <laughs> But um, no, he, Love he really it. is. She's probably going to be an engineer. It sounds like, you know, <laughs> who, who knows? He's he's incredibly tech savvy. He's um, wow. a, an unbelievable problem solver and very curious. Amazing. So who knows? I get the training for you, by the way, because my, my mom's a foster parent and she, uh, Skylar, this is a kid that she's fostering at the moment, he's obsessed with trains. And mm. like his idea of a weekend is just to go with my mum and ride the train. Like literally yes. the London Underground Network. You know what's crazy? Yes. He he's like a, he's eleven and he can name every station on every line. Oh, that's incredible! Unbelievable! Wow. Like I I, I I I it literally blows my brain. Like he he's and he's got the maps all over the room, like the London Underground maps, and he knows you, you know you like you like Victoria Line, and he was like he just goes for every station. That's and uh, amazing. like his dream is just when you hear it from an eleven year old is to ride to see each station. Like how how wow. how cool is that? Like it's just like wow. Like no. you want to ride you want you want to say that you've ridden the entire underground network. Anyway, so I get that one. I get the train <laughs> obsession. Very cool. Yeah. So t tell me a bit more about you. How did you kind of um, tell everyone a little bit more about your journey to where we are today? Did you choose HR? Did or, or did it choose you? <laughs> Along the way. HR chose me. Yeah. In, <laughs> in university, I was actually a classics major in art history minor. Okay. Had no idea what I wanted to do in terms of a career. Went straight into graduate school, um, went to business school. And then coming out, I went and applied um, at a financial services company, um, actually ING, yeah. the U.S. subsidiary, bank insurer. And someone from HR got a hold of my resume. Uh, it was actually the head of total rewards. Um, and our backgrounds were were quite similar in terms of, you know, uh, university in the liberal arts and then 
coming over to concentrate in finance and business school. And he offered me a job in executive compensation. I initially refused, but <laughs> he talked me into it and I've been in HR ever since. Wow. So wh wh where did that ev evolve from that to being a more generalist? What did that look like? I've spent the majority of my career in total rewards. Oh, okay. I I've okay. done rotations as uh, an HR business partner, um, leading HR strategy, um, leading DEI, uh, but really the majority of the time's been in total rewards and service delivery. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I'm a bit of an unusual uh, CHRO in that respect, uh, but we're seeing more and more of them. And uh, yeah, so the journey's been wild. I've, I've relocated seven times. Seven? Uh, wow. seven. Okay. Seven since I started my career. Uh, and it's been it's been a ride, but um, wouldn't change a thing, honestly. Yeah. Well, I, I haven't asked this question before, but what would you say that is the the main skills or attributes that you took from the comms and men's background that's benefited you as a CHRO? It, it's the time in the boardroom. So oh, yeah, I've course, yeah. uh, you know in in my roles, I've I've been in the boardroom um, in different respects for about ten years now, and. I think it's that time understanding governance, understanding board member perspectives, um, how to balance uh, internal management priorities with with board recommendations. It's all of those things that I think are such a critical skill set. And I'd also say that as a total rewards leader, I, I never really put myself in a box in that way. What I always enjoyed most about the job was connecting the dots. So not just thinking in terms of comp for an example, but how does performance management connect into mm -hmm. it? How does succession planning connect into your compensation journey? So I always enjoyed putting the pieces together versus narrowly focusing on just the one COE. Love that. And uh, you kind of have to be like that to, to, in, mm -hmm. to <laughs> sort of be successful <laughs> in the role <laughs> you're in right now. Exactly. But also like, uh, I know we didn't plan on talking com about comms and bends particularly in this podcast, but uh, that, that whole area has massively uh, evolved and innovated and changed, especially over the last couple of years where we're talking about how do we create um, a customized experience for every employee, right? So there's been a lot of evolution Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And I think even during the pandemic, thinking about yes. what are the new sets of benefits, what, mm -hmm. what are the things we need to provide to our employees to improve their experience? As we think about people working remotely, you know, what, what do you do in terms of geographic differentials? How do you pay them where they're working, where the office is? You know, it's all these things. It's, um, it's always been an interesting space uh, from my perspective, but Yes, it's 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 a different it's a different set of uh, challenges mm -hmm. at this point. I think um, many people know the brand. Um, I, f I feel like, or maybe it's just I feel like <laughs> everyone growing up knows has a relationship with Walgreens Boots Alliance in some way or your other brands. Um, mm -hmm. What would you, how would you describe the work culture at Walgreens Boots Alliance? I think the, the first thing I would say is it's it's one that it's really in the midst of change right now. Uh, we're really on a transformation journey as an organization. Um, so uh, Roz Brewer, who's our CEO, uh, actually, I had the opportunity to work with her prior to this at Starbucks. Um, she arrived, um, you know, over a year ago. Um, and when she arrived, she, in October of last year, really set out a new vision, um, new values as an organization and a new purpose. And as part of that, really set the stage for the evolution of our culture um, as an organization. I'd say, you know, what will stick with us even in the midst of this change is our dedication as an organization to the communities we serve um, and to each other. And it's it's really inspiring, especially as you think about you know how how we've moved through the pandemic as an organization and the role that that we've played. Um, you know, we're we're evolving into more of a healthcare company now. That that's what we set out to do mm -hmm. a year ago. Um, and everything is rooted now in this new purpose, which is our new purpose is more joyful lives through better health. And, you know, the, as I said, the people who work here care so deeply about the cu their customers and their patients and communities around the world. Um, so really, our 
what, 315,000 um, team members in 13,000 stores around the globe. They're, they're committed to their work. Um, which is both rewarding and demanding, as you can imagine, <laughs> yeah. during the pandemic. And um, so as we were thinking about it as an HR organization, we decided we were going to have a vision that was specific to our employees, who we call team members. And that vision is to care for our team members as whole people. And that really, that that vision has served as the foundation of, of our people strategy within yeah. the organization. Love that. We, we hear a lot of talk, organizations talk about caring about our people, bringing their whole selves to work. What, is it, what does that mean, though? How, when, you, when you say that, how, what does that mean in terms of action <laughs> for, yeah. for you and the team? So that, that vision is the foundation of how we built our people strategy. And what it means to us is it goes beyond the nine to five. You know, whether that nine to five be in our support center, in our stores, distribution centers, it's about thinking about um, the whole person mm -hmm. when we design our programs, our policies, and that also means individuals, families. So that goes beyond um, the person's work experience or workplace experience. It goes into, you know, what does it mean to support them in their entire lives? Yeah. Um, and that that's really how we've, we've set out to build our strategy. Mm hmm that's great to hear and we we can uh fully both fully appreciate that as parents <laughs> uh, I, it, it doesn't end when you leave you know well now you know work is no, no longer in many ways a place you go to for most right. people right so when you talk about the nine to five um <laughs> you know it kind of uh i almost feel like when i talk to robbie when she's older she may find that whole concept crazy well, I explain. I agree. I think, <laughs> I think it's going away. The law, I'd say that line between um, personal and professional is permanently blurred. Yeah, I can imagine telling our kids when they're older, yeah, we used to go to this place for this hour to this hour. <laughs> and then after that, you just stop and you don't do any work. Right. Like, what, right. what do you mean, Dad? <laughs> That's, um, as well. Could you share some of the kind of initiatives, programs you're doing uh, around this? We'd love to hear more. Sure. I think, you know, a big part of this is manager training. And I like to talk about this a lot because I think no matter the organization, big or small, um, every organization can think this through and how they're going to support, um, you know, your employees bringing their whole selves to work every day and really supporting your employees as whole people. So I think a big part of that is encouraging your leaders to really show up authentically um, in, in the workplace, because from my perspective, no matter what you say to your teams, and no, if you're not role modeling and if you're not showing up and being honest about what's going on in your life, you're not providing your employees with permission to do the same. So I think what's really critical is, um, you know, uh, that your leaders are really showing up authentically every day. And the term I like to use, and I, I use this about myself uh, with my team, is I, I call it being apologetic, unapologetically human. So really giving that permission. So you're understanding what's important to each of your team members personally. Um, it's not enough just to offer, you know, the most innovative, you know, benefits and healthcare. You also have to ensure you understand the unique and individual needs of your people, which could be maybe they need more flexibility. Maybe they're the ones in their family who have to drop their kids off at school every day. So maybe coming in 10 minutes later and staying 10 minutes later is better for them. So it's it's all about thinking through how you meet somebody where they are. And one of the things we did at our organization to really reinforce this was um, a campaign we call I am, we are. So we would have each of our employees uh, define six attributes that describe them as a person, um, along with a photo. And there would be an auto-generated personal social card that that person could share internally or externally on LinkedIn. You might have seen it on LinkedIn if, if you were to go on and, and uh, follow me or anybody else at WBA. And the, the idea is that it really describes um, and helps them feel empowered to be open Love it. Ab about who they are um, and, you know, really understanding each other as an organization, we believe makes makes us more, more powerful. So for me, you know, I would have put on there, 
you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a fierce mama and wife. I'm a, um, I'm a neurodiversity advocate, uh, you know, all the different things that describe me and, you know, allowing uh, the team to know who I am a bit better. I love it. How did you, uh, so many questions. <laughs> how did you, collect, how did you collect that? Like, what did that look like? It was what system you built internally or like, what, what, what was that process? So we really launched it as um, at one of our big all employee events that we call Ignite. Mm -hmm. And we made it available through, um, through our internal social channels, as well as through our internal website. And people could just download it, auto populate it. And then we gave them the permission to say, okay, if you want to share it with your team, okay, if you want cool. to put it on LinkedIn, if you want to share it on our internal social channels, it just gave them that opportunity to do that to really express who they are. Yeah. I love that. How often do we give our, our employees the opportunity to do that? I don't think very often True. and empower them, right? To share this, right. is, this is who I am. This is me. As you said, unapolog unapologetically me <laughs> in, in <laughs> exactly. every way. And I guarantee there's so many people that learn a lot about uh, others that they thought they didn't, that they didn't know before. Right. You know, for me, I, I'll give you an example in my own company for, for, my whole career, I suffer from anxiety, anxiety attacks and panic attacks. And I hid that from my employees. Like even my wife didn't even know, right? For like 15 years, I was having these. And the moment I started speaking about it, all of a sudden, some of my closest friends, family members and employees came and said, I feel the same way, Chris. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, wow, we've all been suffering in silence this long. Um, and no, it's, it's, it's so true. And I, I, I had a very similar um the situation in my life that that really impacted me. Um, I, you know, as I mentioned, I started my career in in banking and financial services. So I was always trained and coached to show up polished and on yep. time mm -hmm. and perfect without flaw. And when after my son was born, we'd actually just moved to Seattle, where I was starting in my new role. I'd been there for about two or three months. And um, we realized um, my son needed to go through an evaluation and we received the diagnosis that he was on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. And we had no network in Seattle. We um, had no friends, no family. I didn't know where to go. I barely knew his pediatrician. <laughs> we didn't know what to do. And I, I, for the first time, had to really open up at work and I had to ask for help not only to show, you know, my emotion going into it, um, really crying for the first time at work for the first time and asking for help. But I am telling you, you know, as I learned to be more open and human and share my story, the people who came out of the woodwork yeah. to say, I am dealing with this too. Mm -hmm. I never shared it at work because I didn't think it was okay. I thought they'd think I wasn't as committed because I'm managing this at home. What it opens up for your employees, it, it's, and you know, it's personal decision to share as much, you know, but at, what I would say is it, it creates a new level of trust that 100%. You know, I, I learned through doing. Uh, thank you for sharing that. I think it's, it's mm -hmm. so important. And what the re it, it was through one of the, and the, the, talking about the importance of sharing it would, I shared my uh, first came out to speak about how I was struggling because Tim Munden, who's a chief learning officer at Unilever at the time, their global head of well-being, he shared that he was struggling on the podcast. Mm. And I was like, you, like someone I look up to is amazing and like, you know, invincible and doing incredible work. And he was like, I have to, I needed to take two months out, Chris, to take care of my well-being. And I was like, wow, here's this incredible executive from one of the biggest brands in the world being vulnerable live. He was live on LinkedIn. <laughs> at the time right. and, and i'm feeling the same way and i'm so, and i'm and that was what his story is what encouraged me to speak up um right. so you sharing your story right now is really really important and a side comment by the way my my mom my mom the skyler who i mentioned earlier who loves the trains he's on the autism spectrum as well so maybe there's a thing there about trains there is <laughs> and, there and, is and, and, and no, he, i've, I've and, been reading a lot about it actually and, there, and, is, there is a thing about trains because that's also when i was speaking to he, one of his care workers they're like that's one of the reasons he can memorize the whole maps right of the network and i was like how does he remember <laughs> anyways um as well yeah no, i think no, it, i know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about it's fascinating it's so fascinating the, and neurodiversity i've got actually an author of a best-selling neurodiversity book coming on the show next week which i'm really excited really? about yeah it's a oh. topic that we don't talk enough about and it's something I, I'm, i've been personally on a bit of a mission to spotlight on on the show so i love that you shared that 
And, um, and really, you know, and I'll also share with you, and I'm definitely going to listen into that podcast. I'm really proud of the fact that we were able to announce um, a few weeks ago uh, that we will be the first company in the S&P 500 to have a separate and distinct metric in our bonus plan that uh, commits us to our goal of disability representation. Amazing. So good so to hear that. So we've set that. We've, put, we've not only set the goal, we've put teeth behind it. Yeah. And everyone who participates in our bonus plan is, is now um, going to be part of that commitment. So very excited about that. I love that. And you mentioned something really important. There's one thing saying it, and there's another thing actually putting the metrics in place to hold right. people, hold yourselves right. accountable, hold people accountable um, as well. So love, love to hear that you're doing right. that. Um, what last thing I'll say on that kind of uh, comment you mentioned about sharing and being vulnerable, it, it was the complete opposite of what I realized, you know, me worrying mm -hmm. about what my wife, my friends, colleagues going to think. I realize now that, and I say it all the time, like my vulnerability is my superpower. Right. You know, it was, the, it was, the, it was the opposite <laughs> of what, of what I, I thought, you know, now it's strengthened my relationships at home, at work. And even with my clients, I've had conversations around, around this topic and it's just, the, the, and I'll let you know, and the listeners know, I haven't had a panic attack since that day. Really? Yeah. It's been what, two and a half years now. I've never had a panic attack since because it was carrying that, that weight around right. it and it would build, 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 build. And until, you know, I'm out for a month, just exhausted and just having panic attacks and feel like I have a heart attack when I'm leaving the house because I know one to talk to because I'm just holding it in. And at the moment I'm, and don't get me wrong, I still feel anxious sometimes and still of feel warm, but now I have someone to talk to. Now I can pick up the phone That's... and say to my team, literally a few days ago, I said to the team, I, I just need a day off guys. Like, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed with the move of the house and everything's going on. And they were like, we got you. It's all good. You, you go and do what you got to do. And they kind of right. explain the feeling of that, knowing that my team's got my back <laughs> and they're like, no, they're not judging me. And they're like, and it also when they feel the same way, now they can come to me. Right. And they know that I'm not going to judge them for it, or they're exactly. not going to miss a promotion just because they didn't come in um, for it, you know? So it's just so powerful. So I'm glad, I'm glad we got into that topic. It's, yeah, it's, no, it's so and important. I, look, this is the unapologetically human piece that I'm, I'm talking about. And I, I, I love how you put it because I've done a lot of reading on the building of trust. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what this goes back to. When you open yourself up, the trust you build, the relationships you build. Yeah. You know, it's it's a superpower. I, mm -hmm. I absolutely love that story. And I'm I'm very happy for you. Yeah, but but on the other side, the difficult part, right, is the way we've been taught to lead to lead is almost the opposite. Uh, mm -hmm. in my, like you said earlier, when I became a manager, it was like, you're the leader, you got to show strength, mm -hmm. no vulnerability, you know, <laughs> right. and, and, and that's how, that's <laughs> how we were coached, you know, early, yeah. early career that, that was, you've got to unlearn it almost. Yeah. And I think really the, the pandemic accelerated the need to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, it, we showed for, showed, um, um, whether you could see it, but whether you heard it before, you can now see it. Mm -hmm. You could see into my life that I'm struggling with a four-year-old running around. <laughs> in the back, you're like, oh, so might be making a guest starring appearance at any moment. Yeah, yeah. And she's at nursery now, so so we're all good now. But during oh, okay. the pandemic, she was here all the time um, as well. But so so, what are you doing in those managerial programs to to shift that? Are you bringing in external organizations? Have you tra are you training leaders internally to kind of lead? You know, lead with empathy, etc. Like, what, what, what's the process? Well, it's, it's a combination of things. So we not only started having these conversations and coaching our managers, but we also introduced a new um, program, and I'd also call it a campaign. We rolled this out during Mental Health Awareness Month called Be Well Connected, and it uh, involved um, introducing three tools, three platforms uh, um, to really meet people where they are. Um, can you can you share those? Oh, you're gonna you're, yeah. oh, you're gonna share them. Go, go great, for it. <laughs> go, go yeah. for it. So we had Life 365, mm -hmm. um, which provides a series of online tools in combination with five free mental health counseling sessions, and those can be in person or virtual. We have a Journey Live, uh, which is a web based platform and a mobile app, and it provides both live and on demand um, classes uh, taught by experts on topics that include managing stress, uh, improving sleep. They're also manager related. This is, this is what I was, I was going to with the example, you know, how to lead with authenticity, a number of classes yeah. like this. And what's great is you can attend 
with others within our organization, almost like a community. So you're interacting with each other while having that chance to talk to the expert and ask questions. And then the third is IndieFlix. And I like to refer to this one as uh, WBA's own Sundance channel. So it's <laughs> okay. a documentary film series um, featuring a mental health topics such as anxiety is one, um, social media addiction, um, cyberbullying and harassment. So when you think about how that comes to life, um, think about one of our pharmacists in, in one of our stores, and she comes home after a long shift to her teenage daughter glued to her phone and whose mental health is being significantly impacted by social media. You get it. The, the mm -hmm. bullying, she's in tears. Um, you know, she, she's picturing the perfect life of the person she follows. That's not her own. So together they could watch one of these indie flicks documentaries on social media addiction. They, and they could talk about it together. Um, you know, talk about the tools that are introduced as they, they navigate it, um, together. Love that. So, yeah, that was the campaign we introduced. It's so cool as well, because you mentioned those workers that you have. They're not all in the office, are they? You know, a big, huge right. portion, if not most, I'm sure, are not in the office. So how do you create solutions like apps that are accessible wherever they are, however they are, whatever device they want right. to watch on and bring in, like you mentioned, their family into it. It's so important that we connect with those workers. Right. And it's and it's never going to be a one size yes. you know, fits all solution. The way that we put this together and developed it was really listening to our people and recognizing the the varied set of of needs that they had and you know how do we put together a combination of things that really could um you know meet the individualized needs of of our employees and their families mm -hmm. what's the what's the feedback been so far oh it's um i am absolutely thrilled we're we're really tracking um internally the success and the metrics in six months since we introduced journey live as an example we have 227,000 <laughs> team members and their families that have signed up wow. are enrolled and are participating right now. It's just an incredible result. And what's really exciting is, you know, we're working with Journey Live right now to even develop with them our own content that's that's I was going to ask you that is it your own content I was going to ask you that is it your own obviously I was assuming because of how you would scale it that would be a bit more challenging but it would be amazing right to feature stories of your own right. employees right in in there that would be so cool to, well to they've that. they've been amazing so we're we're about uh next month I believe we're going to be launching um, a class series for pharmacists specifically. Nice. And we're also going to be launching one for, for parents, um, caregivers of children with special needs. Will that so pharmacist one feature your own pharmacist? Would it feature your own pharmacist as well in there? Not this one particularly, but they've been so flexible. They're incredibly innovative and nimble. And um, that, nice. that could be the, that could be the next Could phase. be the next one. That'd be cool to okay. see it, right? From your own pharmacies Absolutely. and the stories. Uh, how, you mentioned measurement because there's so many companies investing in all of these different apps, technology solutions. What mm -hmm. does success look like? How are you measuring this? Uh, well, for us, we do measure participation. We also have a number of feedback channels where we can hear directly um, from our employees, their comments, sentiment about mm -hmm. uh, live events um, and other um, components of the tools. So this is how we're sourcing. All right. What um, what class series would be most relevant to them that maybe they're not finding today? So we're continuing to customize the tools we have. Um, you know, find out what's working and what's not. And, you know, something I always like to say to our employee base is, look, we're going to keep listening. We're going to respond and act. And we're not always going to get it right. <laughs> it's not always going to be perfect on the first go. But our commitment to you is um, we're going to adapt. We're going to stop what's not working and we're going to keep moving forward. So that that's our commitment to them. It's It's always a kind of continuous path. You're never done. And it's it's about lim uh, listening and and reacting. Yeah, isn't that so refreshing though? Right, uh, like I remember in my days in corporate, like they would never show any vulnerability, or like as an organization, everything like they do a survey, you fill it in, you don't ever hear anything. <laughs> but isn't Back, that the right? most frustrating yeah. thing? Is that yeah. attitude of like, oh well, well we've got it right, you know, it, and that's that's really not the one we take. We're you know we're 
human. The leaders at the table are human and we're going to do our best, but we don't always get it right on the first go. We're, so we're, we're going to commit to, to change. And, you know, it, it takes courage. It's one of our values as an organization is, yeah. is courage. Well, you're definitely living it. Yeah. Cause I feel like it's important now when companies are doing all these poll surveys, et cetera, like communicate, this is what we've, you know, we hear you, this is what we're going right. to do this. And, and we, right. we can't do all of those. You know, we can't do everything, but these are the things right. we, are, we are doing and this is where we are, right? And it's just so yeah. refreshing to, right. because, because otherwise it just leads to frustration. You know, people are going to go the opposite. They're going to not be engaged. <laughs> They're not going to yeah. fill in the next one. So yeah, I love, I love how the communi the communication piece is something that I feel like companies really get wrong. And I think as a CHRO, it's probably one of the skill sets you really need to master, right? How you communicate yeah. this. To exactly. Everyone. Never ask a question if you're not going to do something with the information you receive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, if, if, if you're not really committed to doing something, you know, you, you've, if you ask the question, you've got to report back about what you heard and what you're going to do with it. Yeah. So, Having gone through important. this entire process, then you kind of been on this journey. What, what best practices or tips would you give to our audience uh, who are also on this mental health and wellbeing journey, which meant, which everyone is right now. I would say um, benchmarking is always important, but don't do what everybody else is doing. You, your employees are unique. Your culture is unique. Listen to your employees and, you know, provide them with what makes sense for them. Mm -hmm. I, I think listening and responding, as, as I said, um, it, it's really key. I think also in this, this new environment that we find ourselves in post pandemic, um, make sure you're thinking about the whole person. So think about not only your employees, but also their loved ones. Yeah. Um, and you know, that, that's, that was a big part of our be well connected, um, program that I, that I just shared. Everything is available to both of our employees and their families. And, you know, finally, I'd say, make sure you're leading with authenticity and vulnerability. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked about this quite a bit. Be, be brave and be unapologetically human yep. and, yep. you know, uh, see what it could do for you. I mean, uh, try it out. I think <laughs> you'll be you surprised said, you know, this, <laughs> yeah. you'd be surprised. <laughs> and I think you're going to keep doing it af after you, after you try it. It's funny. Like, what do we expect our employees are going to think? Oh my God, what you have no problems at all, Chris. <laughs> like, Obviously we yeah. all have challenges. Um, listen, before I let you go, I want to jump into our quick fire round, uh, which we do with all the guests. Um, but you only have 30 seconds per question. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> what are your hobbies and passions outside the office? Lego. Lego. I'm a huge Lego enthusiast. I don't know if you can see behind me on my oh, desk. Oh, I need to connect you. I need to connect you with Lauren, who's the C C okay. CPO of Lego. Um, oh, okay. Do, do you want to hear something crazy? I, I'm an addict. So next year in January, uh, in, in uh, February, we are actually going to host a CHRO workshop at Lego <laughs> and day, day one <laughs> in Denmark and day one is a tour of the Lego innovation center and a tour of the manufacturing site. So if you could find an excuse to come over to Denmark next year, you're oh, more than, could more I than welcome to, an invite? I, I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> you're more than welcome to come. Um, I'm a massive oh. Lego fan as well. And Lauren and, and the team are incredible. They're hosting us. So Lauren will be running it. Oh, lovely. Yeah. So I'll send you an invite if you can make it. Okay. Over. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. Love it. Love it. Um, if you could click your fingers and change one thing about HR, what would you change? I would say it would be to be perceived uh, and seen in all organizations the way it is at WBA, which is that our function's key to driving business results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely agree on that one. How would yeah. your friends and family describe what you do for a living? Yeah, so I heard you ask this question on another <laughs> podcast, and I actually went to my husband a couple of weeks ago and asked him this question, <laughs> and I, his response was pretty interesting or funny, however you'd like to characterize it. <laughs> he called it all things at all times on all days. <laughs> He's not wrong. He, he's, he's, really, not wrong. he's really not but wrong. <laughs> I, I viewed it in the most positive sense, because I think when you when you have the right leadership within your organization, you know, they, they know how to leverage HR and it's it's almost boundaryless. Um, it's our true. roles as a uh, chief, especially HR when you have a global role, right? You're always on. Exactly. Right. It's exactly. Yeah. It's quite rare. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. If anyone from HR listening gets it. <laughs> yes, they yeah. get it. They get it. it. Um, what legacy do you want to leave behind for your family? That I made a difference in the lives of others. Mm -hmm. It's a great reason. That's, it's a great reason to get out of bed every day. That, that I impacted, even if it was a small group of lives, I, I, I want to improve people's every day.
Love it. Um, have you ever considered leaving HR? If so, never. why? Never. <laughs> never. No, I would say probably in the first three months <laughs> of my, you know, almost 20 year career. But uh, no, no. So how not. do you push through those times that are really hard? Like we've all been in those moments, right? I say we, I mean, I've spoken to your colleagues <laughs> who have been yeah, in those, those moments, right? You're like, ah, oh, this is too much. What gets you through? I guess I, I my, funny enough, speaking of Thomas the Train, my, my mantra is uh, never give up never give up no matter how big the challenge is. And honestly, if you've got the right leaders behind you, and if you have the right sponsorship from your CEO and your executive team, no problem is too challenging. Mm -hmm. when, when you know it, it's going to be okay to fail, you just have to give it your best. Yeah. And you just have to try and stand up to it now. Yeah, it never. comes back to creating that psychological safety as well, right? Amongst exactly. your team, clearly you have that of your CEO, CEO and the exec team and you know, you fell forward together, you celebrate it actually right. <laughs> in many ways um, as well. So not everyone has that, but it's great to hear that you you, yeah. you have that. Um, what's the biggest investment would you say you've made in yourself, in your career? Oh, definitely education. So um, I've been working almost continuously since I was 15 years old. <laughs> so business school, but also what I've done is, you know, as I've gone into different industries and, you know, I've worked in financial services, banking, then um, uh, fintech and retail of different sorts. Um, like when I went into financial services and I, I wanted to understand it better, I actually went to Emory University and did the coursework to get my um, CFP uh, designation. And, you know, when I've, when I went into retail, I looked into explore different educational opportunities to help me learn the industry better. So I always, you know, in, invest in myself to to learn the business and to take the time to do that. Um, and I've always uh, found it to be very value add and rewarding. Yeah. Well, let, let's be honest with, for when I started in this 17 years ago to where we are now, if you don't have a growth mindset, you're not, you right. wouldn't, you wouldn't be <laughs> the CHRO of you any, of any, of it, you know, think about how much the HR itself is fundamentally changed. The workplace, everything's changed from the days of, it, you know, personal relations i think when i started <laughs> to where we are now exactly. I, I would never have believed you that we would be talking about the some of the things that we're talking about now if you, if you asked I me know. this 15 years ago so yeah and it's a never-ending growth learning you know and journey yeah. right but probably one yeah. of the reasons you, you you probably stayed engaged so long there's always something new you know this is a never-ending quest uh, exactly. in that sense um last question um parting piece of advice what would be your parting piece of advice for our audience uh, who will be sitting in your seat one day? I'd say be courageous, never stop learning and never give up. That would be my parting piece of advice. Amazing. I think you've got to continue innovating. You've got to continue learning and you've got to continue connecting with your people and make sure that that you're delivering for them the, the things they need to be successful. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, Absolutely. Clearly, you found the right place. I feel like, you know, we talk a lot about, a lot about purpose to impact. And I feel like you're in the right space, the right organization with a great, great, great leadership team. So, so excited for you and the team as you continue this journey. And uh, yeah, I wish you all the best until we next speak. And hopefully I'll see you. I'll send you some Lego at the worst case scenario. <laughs> <So, yeah. laughs> <laughs> if i can't make it I'll, I'll be watching the mail no no worries well listen i wish you all the best it was a lot of fun thank you so much for having thanks. me thanks bye bye